series U Cello. We've had lots of requests on Cello Australia from students and teachers and cellists wanting practical tips and ideas that they could utilize with their students, focusing on common problems that young students face. The first today we're going to be looking at bow technique and in particular one problem that many students face early on in their days of learning cello. And it is this, students have a hard time in the beginning supporting the weight of the bow. The tip always wants to droop down with gravity to the floor. And they might start with good intentions, but soon end up with this sort of approach. Now, what's the problem there? The problem is, of course, that when they, when they bow through to the tip, the bow scoots down off to, off to the side, off down to the bridge. Okay, now, solution. I see young minds trying to solve this problem themselves, and a very common attempt is where they try and counterbalance with the little finger to lift the tip of the bow. Now, that's pretty effective, but not very good cello technique. So, what we need to do is, instead, start them off bowing at the point of balance on the bow, where the bow is in equilibrium. And we'll find that bowing at that point, this problem doesn't exist. I'm still in the good bow hold. I haven't resorted to the temptation to allow the, the bow to droop like so. So just by starting at the point of balance, starting students bowing at the point of balance, getting them to hold there, and over a few weeks or months, gradually walking them back down to the frog and they gradually get to be able to support the weight of the bow at the tip without drooping. So that, rather than just asking them not to, to do that funny bow hold, we've actually got a tangible strategy there that's going to avoid it in the first place. Okay, next one is another quite closely related tip to do with bowing. It's about string crossings. And we know, of course, there are four, four strings on cello. There are four bow hold, uh, sorry, bow elbow levels as a result. One, two, three, four. And we find that that seesaw effect works pretty well on the lower three strings. Students are generally very good with their seesaw on the lower three strings, but many many times as soon as they go to the a string they collapse at the wrist in order to get over to the a string and that's very weak approach to a string bowing so we really need to carry the seesaw over i press down on this end and elevate the elbow each time we've got to carry the elbow right up over the a string and one idea that can get that happening is to what I do, what I call pancaking the elbow. I turn a pancake over and you can see my elbow leaves the side of my body as I turn that pancake over. That gets students up and over the A string effectively so that when they do their seesaw, they carry it all the way over to the A string. <laughs> rather than like so. Okay, so that pancaking the elbow is very effective and at avoiding that weedy style of bowing on the A string you don't like to see. And the last idea uh, is also a bow hold idea. Um, we like to encourage students to tilt their bow hold on a bit of a diagonal. I say tip the bow hold towards the tip. 
tip the bow hole towards the tip. Now this is good because it elevates the wrist, which is always good, and but also it enables you to the hooking first finger to exercise some control over the lift and of the tip, lift and dropping of the tip. So. Here I am, I've still got my good bow hold and I have the ability to control the bow in that direction. So, not a bad one, that idea. I hope it helps you. Uh, so, just to summarize the three, the three different ideas from today's video. Number one was to avoid the droopy tip of the bow, which orientates the bow hold to the wrong way. We start off our students bowing at the point of balance, where there's equilibrium. We then gradually return them to the frog when they've got good control. The next one, which was another one based on bow technique, of course, was the seesaw to access the four strings, the four different elbow levels. And the fact that students are generally pretty good on the, on the lower three, but tend to collapse a bit at the wrist for the A string. We said getting them to pancake the elbow, turn that pancake over in order to get them to get up onto the A string was a really good strategy there and get gravity weight into the A string. Uh, the third and final one was holding the bow with a tilt, a tip towards the tip of the bow so that the first finger hook has some control to lift the weight of the bow as well, like so. So there are three ideas that are really effective. We've seen them work time and time again uh, with students and uh, knock those problems on the head so you can get onto good, some good playing with your students. Um, we hope these ideas help you and uh, if you've got any other specific problems or ideas you'd like to focus on in future videos, please leave ideas in the comments section below.